Hey everyone, Matt Watson here from CarWow. So I've got a really exciting car for you here today. Look at this. This is the first ever SUV in Aston Martin's 106 year history. It's called the DBX and it's an alternative to the Bentley Bentayga and Lamborghini Urus. So in this video, I'm gonna talk you around the design. Ooh. I've never seen one that big before. Show you inside. I could definitely live with this. Check out its gadgets. Hmm, that looks familiar. Explain its performance. This is familiar too. Try out some of its accessories. It's a posh car. Why would you not want to go in a posh car? And of course, I'm going to poke it with a stick. Oh yeah. Now make sure you subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when we make a new upload. Let's kick off this video by talking about the DBX's design because while it is an SUV, it's quite clearly an Aston Martin SUV. Check out the grille, very similar to the DB11's, only it's bigger. It's the biggest grille ever fitted to an Aston Martin. Also, the badge, that's the biggest badge ever fitted to an Aston Martin. Then when you look at the bonnet, you've got these strakes in the air vents there, just like on the V12 version of the DB11, and the way the lines point in all the way to the Aston Martin badge. Moving down the sides, 22 inch alloys are standard, though you can get different designs. There's a vent here to help airflow down the side of the car, and it is real people. Then there's these side strakes. Yet again, like the DB11, you can have those in a black color if you want, as can you with the surround for the windows and the roof bars. The door handle, just like on other Astons, and frameless windows. Moving down the back, this roof does taper off quite a lot, and then the haunches really stick out there, accentuated as a result. I want to show you this, the spoiler. Now that does provide a bit of downforce, but also the way it's been designed is that it sends air over the rear screen, so you don't need an unsightly windscreen wiper. It should clear it, but we shall see when I drive it in the UK, no doubt, in the wet. My favourite bit though is this, the ducktail spoiler, just like on the Vantage, it's great to see it here on an SUV. I love it! Also down here, you've got a really deep rear bumper and lower section, which looks sporty. And we've got two exhaust pipes there. These are surrounded in carbon fiber, which is an optional extra. But let me just check something. Come on, this is car wow. I have the car wow stick of truth. Look at this. Oh yes. Yes, look at that. There are no fake exhausts or vents on this car. Aston, keeping it real. You might be thinking this particular car is black, but it's actually a really dark pearlescent green, and it looks really cool when you check it out close up because there's really nice flecks in the paintwork. However, if you're wanting a little bit more showy, that is entirely possible. Look. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Now, this is a little bit more me, a bright red, and I think it just shows off this car's lines a little bit better. I reckon this is the first ever SUV to genuinely look like a sports car. Now Aston has been able to do that because they've built it on an all new platform, which was designed with this car's eventual look in mind. When you compare that to things like the Bentley Bentayga, the Lamborghini Urus and the Porsche Cayenne Coupe, those cars all share the same platform and chassis. So they're constrained by what they can do. Yeah, they can change interior bits and body panels to give them a little bit of a different feel or look. However, they all pretty much have the same dimensions. You can sort of think of those cars as being like a house that you redecorate or renovate. You know, you can make it look different, but it's still pretty much the same shape or size. This Aston, it's more like they've started with a plot of land and then built a house from scratch, from the ground up to look exactly the way they want it. Now that's my opinion, but what do you think? Which do you think looks the best? Click on the pop-out banner up there. Is it this new DBX, the Ventega, the Urus, or the Cayenne Coupe? The only way you really identify a car when you're driving at night is by its exterior lighting design, but in videos, you never really get to see that. But today, we can. So this is what the DBX looks like. Aston tried to keep it very minimalist, but you should be able to recognize it mainly by this DRL, which is actually surrounding the cooling duct for the brakes. Now let's see what the indicators are like. Yeah, they're integrated into the DRL. You don't have like an animation with Audis, but it's still pretty cool. The lighting design at the back is actually more distinctive, but I guess that's sort of appropriate because that's the view you're gonna be seeing of this car once it's overtaken you. Some people may confuse it as being a Vantage that's hovering. Now you might be thinking, well, I wish that the light bulb did actually extend all the way across the boot, but don't worry, it does when you're braking. You see? Welcome to the interior of the new DBX. Now Aston Martin 
spent six months consulting customers to see what they wanted from the interior of an Aston Martin SUV. And this is what they've come up with. A car that does feel sporty in terms of its design with a center console and a cockpit feel, but loads and loads of space, so loads of headroom, loads of legroom, making it easy for people, whether they're really small or really tall, to get comfy. So a wide breadth of people can drive this car, which hasn't always been the case with Aston Martins in the past. So it is easy to like jack up your seat Seat and get a good view out if you're short and then put it all the way back and nice and low if you're very big and I do like this interior design it is a nice looking car the sweeping dash is pretty cool the way all the instruments are there on the center console very simple to use you might find this a little bit familiar yeah this bit here it's from a Mercedes isn't it in fact the infotainment system is Mercedes latest MBUX which is a very very good thing I think that is now the best infotainment system Oh yes. Now on this car, it isn't fully operational. For instance, you haven't got the touchscreen. Reason is, this is a pre-production prototype. The car will not go on sale for seven months from now, so they're still developing it. So bits and pieces in this car aren't finished, such as this key holder down there. That isn't the plastic that will be on the finished car. Also, when you look at the digital dials, it's got this error message coming up here. That's because it's not fully connected and configured. That won't be happening on the real car. So if you've been looking at the car so far, and going, oh, panel gaps there, and commented, that's because, yet again, the car isn't fully finished yet, okay? So I can't actually judge the interior quality too much here, because it wouldn't be fair. The only thing that I find a bit weird are these little fins here on the dash. They sort of remind me of a dinosaur called Dilophosaurus. Yes, once you've seen that, you will never be able to unsee it. Obviously, there's lots of different choices. For instance, this wood panelling here, you don't have to have that. You could have it as metal or carbon fibre, like the steering wheel, and we've got all the controls for the infotainment on there, and the cruise control. Now, this is the first Aston Martin to get automatic cruise control, lane keeping assist, so you can basically drive it with your hands off the wheel, although you shouldn't have to keep your hands on the wheel, otherwise it will disengage. But that's good that they've finally got that fitted to their cars because it's really important in a car like this if you're cruising up and down the motorway. There are some very traditional Aston Martin features such as the gear selectors up here and the starter button. Also things like these metal handles, just like in the new Vantage, I love the gear selectors. Solid metal yet again, feels super expensive. Like this as well. Not just one big visor, but a second one here for full sun protection. Though what I'm not so sure about is this. Just how small the vanity mirror is. It's so narrow, you can just about check out your eyebrows. Mm. Oh, but it does feel lovely, that does. If you're a vegan and are offended by a car that's trimmed in leather, don't worry, you can get the DBX's interior in a microfiber cloth. Though, you know, how principled are you? This is, after all, a V8. Yeah, just saying. Decent storage area under here. There's your connectivity with your USB connections and your 12 volt socket there. Also, look, there's the cup holders. So, yay, look at that. But what happens if someone wants to rest their arm? Because, oh no. Don't you worry, look, someone can have the cup holder and you can still rest your arm there. It's a good idea. Speaking of holding bottles and stuff, Dorbin's blooming massive. Glove box. Oh, yeah, that's an all right size as well. And of course, it's damp, so it feels suitably premium, darling. Also under here, there's actually the wireless charging pad for your mobile phone, and it's big enough to fit even a large phone like my Samsung Galaxy S10. Now, this particular area under here, once again, came out of the customer clinics because female customers said they don't like leaving their handbags on the seat. You know, when they're stuck in traffic, someone might smash a window and take their belongings. So you can actually fit a handbag under there. Once again, Aston Martin listening to its customers and its customers like things like massage seats. You can get them. They're like ambient lighting and you get 64 different colors. Strangely, just like on a Mercedes. I can't actually show you them because yet again, pre-production car, so it's not actually configured. What I can show you though, is there's no metallic speaker covers in this car, it's just perforated leather, because that looks cooler according to Aston Martin. And overall, I do like the interior design of this car. So far, so good. But what's it like in the back seats? The first thing I wanna show you is this. There is no intrusive wheel arch, so it's dead easy to get in. And oh yes, there is plenty of space back here. Never before has an Aston Martin felt so practical. Aston say that this car is actually shorter than the Bentayga, yet it's more spacious in the back seats because it's got a larger distance between the front and rear wheels. I have no reason to disbelieve them because look at that knee room, loads of it. Headroom is good as well. I know, especially like this, a panoramic glass roof, which is standard on all models. 
My only complaint is the fact that you can't recline these seats or slide them like you can in some other SUVs, but it's still fairly practical. You've got some decent door bins. You've got climate control here, so four zone. You've got USB connectivity as well. If I fold this down, you've got your cup holders. And of course you can fold this down as well for through loading, two passengers either side. Carry your skis when you're off to the Alps. Also, if you need to carry three people, yes, there is a huge hump in the floor, but because the footwells are so large, it's not going to be a problem. There's going to be plenty of space for everyone's feet. This is a bit funny though. Look. <laughs> These are almost useless, aren't they? They look expensive, but pointless. The footwells are big, but the way the runners of the seats attach, it means that you do have to put your feet together a little bit to really stretch out, but you can absolutely stretch out. I like this as well. Look, the rear windows, they go all the way down. If Aston Martin can do it, then other manufacturers should be able to. Like this as well. Oh yeah, none of your cheap plasticky grab rails here. You have leather ones. Well, I think they've succeeded with the back seats, haven't they? That's cool as well. Aston Martin embossing the headrests. Just to remind you of what car you're in. Oh, uh, by the way, if you've noticed that bit there missing the speaker cover, once again, it's because this is a pre-production car. The DBX also has a very big boot. 632 litres of space with the seats in place, which is bigger than a Range Rover, a Bentayga, an Urus, and a KN Coupe, though a normal KN is slightly larger. It's a nice square shape though, and you've got things like posh tethering points, a scuff plate here, no load lip, so it should be easy to load things in and out. Also, if I press these buttons here, I can fold down the rear seats, but as you can see, they're sometimes snag. Look, on the seat belts. Gosh, look at that. Oh yeah, I tell you what, I definitely don't want this car anymore. It's absolutely rubbish. There's plenty of options to personalize the interior of the DBX with various interior colors. This one is called Copper. Mm. So it works with the red paint. Not so sure about the red stitching here though. Also, I don't like the gloss effect of the wood down here. What I do really like though is this. Oh, lovely Alcantara headlining. That is lush. Aston Martin has created 11 different accessory packs to go with the DBX, such as this colour-coded luggage set. It's very nice. You can also get a little saddle bag for the rear centre armrest. Oops, don't worry, it's supposed to come off. However, my favourite accessory is the dog pack. So that includes this Aston Martin branded case, which has inside the bowls and the lead. There's also a special doggy shower here so you can hose off your dog so it doesn't make a mess of the interior. An Aston Martin branded gate there to stop it dribbling all over the back seats. You've got a very plush bed for it as well. And this important cover which you can just fold down so it doesn't scratch your car's paintwork. All I need now is a dog. So come on Toro, Toro, come on, come on in, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on in, come on, go on, go on, come on, in, in, in. In there, look, meat, 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 meat. It's an Aston, you want to get inside it? Come on, up, up, come on. come on, it's a posh car. Why would you not want to go in a posh car? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Right, come here, there we go, there we go. Sometimes you just got to do it yourself. Now sit on the bed, there we go, sit on the bed, enjoy the Aston Martin. Oh, also make sure you always colour code your dog to the interior. Yes, good boy. That was hard work. You're probably wondering how much the DBX costs. Well, it starts from £155,000, but after a few choice options, you're going to be getting on for 200 grand, really. Though, like for like, it's going to be a similar money to a Bentley Bentayga. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of the Bentayga. Now, the first 500 customers who buy a DBX will get a special bill book on the car, which is signed by Aston's creative director, Marit Reitman, and the guy who actually designed the car. Also, they get invited to a special cocktail party at a Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Lovely. What we have here is a Mercedes-AMG 4-litre twin-turbo V8. Now, it may say Aston Martin here, but it was built in Germany, not in England. Yeah, we all know that anyway, don't we? Still, you can't argue with the choice because it's a great engine. So you have hot turbo, so they're in the V there, so you get really good responses. And this thing in the DBX puts out 550 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque. Good for 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. And this car will top out at 181 miles an hour. 
Unfortunately, today I'm not actually allowed to drive the DBX. That is going to be for another video, but I bet like me, you want to hear what it sounds like because Aston Martin has done a lot of work tuning the exhaust, so it sounds superb. So let's check it out. Can we start the car, please? Mm, yeah, it's fairly fruity and it's on the normal setting right now. Give it some revs! Oh my God, I got soaked. More! <laughs> <laughs> There's more over the camera lens, but let's carry on. Now put it into sports plus mode. So that's gonna open up the valves in the exhaust, make it louder. More! More! Well, it sounds awesome, though I am slightly deaf and I'm completely wet and I don't know what you can see because there's just like exhaust water all over the lens. <laughs> Aston Martin is very keen for this SUV to still feel very sporty to drive. And so they put it through the same 5,000 miles of enthusiastic development driving like they do for the Vantage and the DBS to make sure they've got it set up just right. Now, if you'd like to see me do some enthusiastic driving in my own AMG G63, just click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my video. The DBX uses a bonded aluminium chassis just like sports cars use. That makes it nice and stiff, yet helps keep the weight down, though to be fair this thing does still weigh 2,245 kilos, so about the same as its main rivals. The DBX has a 9-speed automatic gearbox, just like you seem to get in Mercedes for some reason. Now it sends power to all four wheels and it uses an electronically controlled centre differential and that can send almost 50% of the engine power to the front wheels if it needs that extra grip. Also, you can send 100% of the power, if it wants to, to the rear wheels, so for sporty driving. You've also got an electronically controlled limited slip diff on the back axle, so it can move power between the rear wheels, whichever, once again, has the most grip to improve cornering, and there's also torque vectoring by braking, so it should be good fun to drive. Also, they fitted the car with a carbon fiber prop shaft, so you have less inertia, which should make it a bit more responsive to throttle inputs. The car has a different driving mode, so you change them by pressing these buttons here. And you have GT, Sport and Sport Plus, and they do things that alter the throttle response and the weight of the steering and all that kind of stuff. Also, the car is fitted with active anti-roll bars, and basically what that does is use the adaptive dampers to stiffen up the corner of the car when it starts to lean to try and keep it nice and flat. As well as the three on-road driving modes, there are two off-road ones, Terrain and Terrain Plus, if it's really tricky. You also have stuff like hill descent control. Yes, this car is actually designed to be taken off-road occasionally, though no one ever will, but you could if you wanted to. The car gets three-chamber air suspension and you can raise it up by 45 millimeters over the standard setting if you need to go off-road, or you can lower it by 50 millimetres below the standard setting if you want to make it look sportier or easier to get in and out of. And you can do it at the boot here as well by pressing a button. Yeah, easier for loading then, isn't it? Aston has worked with Pirelli to create three specific tyres for the DBX, a summer tyre, a winter tyre and an all-season tyre. They've also fitted it with some big-ass brakes, so you've got six-pot calipers at front and they grip 41 centimetre discs. At the back, you've got 39 centimetre discs. Now this is a little bit unusual, a tow hitch setup on an Aston Martin. Yes, this car can definitely tow. Actually, Aston Martin did a lot of testing towing this car with a trailer with various cars on the back, including a DBS. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of the DBS Superleggera. So then, what's my verdict on the new Aston Martin DBX? Yeah, I know I haven't driven it yet, but really, unless it drives like a complete dog, which I'm pretty sure it's not going to, it's going to be a success, isn't it? You know, it's a good looking SUV. It's luxurious inside. It's practical. It's easily going to be Aston's best selling car ever. And if it's not, then I'm a monkey's uncle. Come on, 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 come on. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come up, 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 You won't scratch the paintwork, I promise you. We won't send you a bill, it'll be fine. Come on, 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 come on,